commandant escaped. He escaped the term. I'm, I'm talking too much. No, 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 I, I do think we have to, fortunately, I, what we do is nobody wants to stay, but we do have a, um, I'm sorry. No, the, no, don't uh, be sorry. You, you keep talking. I want to say uh, thank you, but I know some people have to go. Um, if anybody else, does anybody else have to go? Yes, Maybe no? Ten, yeah, yeah. Sure. All right. Please, you, you, you want to hear the end of my story, huh? Yes. So the commandant had, had escaped, and he, he, was a, he was a cool guy. He said, OK, we moved. We moved. I moved all my people, everything. I moved tomorrow night. I moved to her. And he did. He said, well, how is it on your house? But that meant something that it was on the others. The people who attacked him, the tank, was a detachment of the Africa Corps. They had their tank, and they had a, a, they had a, a 45 rail, a machine, you know, and they pushed all our containers like that, and they were able to come up to these hours. Only his hours means that he had been told the German knew that he was. How did he knew it? How did they knew it? And you know, it was it was always it was another time from the same commandant. He was waiting for the plane to come from the sky and storm it. And the plane came, and all the lights, you know, and all the lights. And instead of the of the containers. It was two bombs and machine gun. How could the German knew that that night, at midnight, there was to be a parachutage by the way? They knew it. They knew it because someone who was maybe part of the, of the, of the group had told the German that night we have this and this and that. So they waited. They waited, you have to have some nerves after that to say, hey, they're going to do it again. They waited, and the right plane came and dropped the thing. But you see that. They knew exactly, they knew exactly where he was leaving to burn his house. They know exactly how to, the night of the, of the dropping. So you were never sure of it. There was another way, and that, that is for me is very dramatic. I, I never spoke about that. I swear to you, for, for, I don't know, 70 years, I never talk about that. One, one morning, I was living at, with my grandmother. It was a small rectangular plaza. I was just here, I was just there, and I was there. Here it was a big farm of my grandma. I go out, and I was working on the farm. And you know, at that time, I was still working on the farm close, so I was not going through the, through the, I didn't have to go through the village. I was going out the village. And of those three or four houses, come a voice and say, hello. Open my eyes like that, people can say hello. And a nice looking woman was there saying hello. And she said, I'm coming here to the house of my parents. I escaped Paris because it's too young, yeah? so I want to live here. Can you provide me with some food? I said, of course I can provide you with some food. I provide you with some food. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and one night, and another night, plus, you know, I was uh, 22 years old, and she was a very nice looking woman. <laughs> so, uh, come on, hey, let's, let's, let, let's put the thing where they are. <laughs> <laughs> so, finally, she said, finally, she told me, you are the resistance. I said, yes, I'm the resistance. I said, perfect, because I am London. And believe it or not, she gave me the exact information on how it works, what we have to do. Exactly like Pearl. Exactly like Pearl. So I went to Pearl and I said, Pearl. And Pearl said, that is absolutely impossible. Two British missions cannot go over another <coughs> She's a spy. She tries to put you in. And effectively, she says, we are going to have a plane that night on a, on a field that had been recognized by the British as our landing place. Because you know, when you were, when you wanted some, some parachutage, you, know, you had to tell the British 
deal it with them. And they were sending a plane to make a photograph to see if it was convenient or not convenient for them to do it. And accepting or re say, find some, 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 yes. And she leads me exactly to the place where we had real British mission, or because it was the nicest way, place to do it. And she said, you see, day after tomorrow, how many men do you have? I say, I have something like uh, 22 men. And she said, you bring them all. At midnight, on the field, <coughs> I'll show you, i show you on that field, and they will help, you know, they will help for the past. So it's where I, I, I ask her, hey, and, and her told me she's a, she's a German. She's a spy. She wants to, to get the point. That was one of the way of the Germans. You know. She knew absolutely everything concerning how to do it. So that's why I say, uh, uh, so I say, Mark, Mark and Eugene, please come with me. And at night, we enter a room. And it was strange because that hours you had to make two, two steps to be in the dining room on the street. The, 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 it was not at the level of the street, you had to go like that. So Mark and Eugene drop in absolutely, and she was sitting, she was on the chair like that. They put it down. She, she, they put her down like that. Impossible to move. And I told her, hey, listen here. You know very well that you are not the British. You are a German. You speak very well French. She was speaking with no accent. She said, yes, I make all my studies in France, and I am a graduate of La Sorbonne. And she was a pure Nazi. And I told her, listen, we caught you. If you want, we consider you as a war prisoner. You know, that's it. You will be treated as a war prisoner. And that's it. And that, uh, you tell us what you have to tell us, but you will be. She started to insult me, absolutely insult me. She spit at me. So at the point, I'm sorry to tell you that story, but it's, it's the exactly how it did happen. I put my hand like that to Mark. And Mark put it, he had a 45 revolver. You know, it's a, it's a thing like that with the, 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 that's like that. So he put it in my hand, and I put it on her forehead. And I say, Suzanne, she said, not Suzanne, Marika. And once more, she started to insult me. She said, you are going to be smashed down. They are going to, to crush you. They are going to. She said, please, come with us. And we will be. And, and she, she insulted me at the point that my dear, what I did was, I did, I killed her. I saw that I would never sleep after that. I fall on my bed like a piece of wood. And Pearl told me, Pearl told me, Michel, it was all your responsibility to do that. If you had not done it, we would have done it. Because she was a wild animal, one of those Nazi. You don't know, you have Nazi like that, you know, incredible. So she said, you do it, you do it, and you think you, you must do it. And I did it. And after that, no, he said, Pearl said, you were right to do it, because if you not, had not done it, we would have done it. But you know, so it's right for uh, something like 70 years. I did like, I tell you so today to you as human people, something that I have never, never told to any assembly of people. So it was all like that. You know? I believe that maybe I'm too long. I think, I, I'm sorry, I, I have to go. I don't know if anyone else does, but I do have to leave. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, don't I'm be sorry. Don't Thank be, you very don't, much don't for coming. I'm sorry, I, I, I talk like No, it was excellent. Thank you. So, you know, and, uh, I had some other experience. I had an experience, I told you, I had a big, big group, a smaller group, two experiences. One day, a kid comes to me full speed on a bicycle. He said, there are 15,000 Germans who want to surrender. 
but they don't want to surrender to, to the maquis, to the, to the resistance. They want an official surrender. So I just went to Pearl and said, Pearl, there are 15,000 Germans. I don't know where they are exactly. And they were in the middle of fields. Means there was no wood. They could not be attacked. 15,000 in their trucks, trucks pulling the, 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 the guns. And while they were stopped, they have no more gas. They could go nowhere. They could go absolutely nowhere. So Pearl negotiated you know, the rendition. <coughs> and my friend Vanier here, he had a group that was specialized on pickup trucks, gasoline trucks of the Germans. So we had three gasoline, full tanks, gasoline trucks all around, but plain gasoline, not automobile gasoline. And when we were using it, we had to put almost a bit of a quart of oil into it, otherwise the engine. So <laughs> I was there, and they asked one of the trucks to come and give them the gas. Their trucks, with the, you know, on them. On them. <laughs> And I, I filled all the trucks with that gasoline without the oil. They didn't have to go too far away. So I was sure that they maybe would do it. <laughs> the engine would maybe do it. <laughs> Apparently they did it. <laughs> they surrendered to the Americans. But, but 15,000 people, and I saw them going through the village, you know. All the people of the village were in the street. No one saying a word. No, perfect silence all those Germans in their truck, you know. Not one person of the crowd say one word. Not one. Absolutely no word. So, you know, it was, it was full, it was full. I mean, it was, it was a... <laughs> the gasoline took me to another thing. I told you that I had a small maquis, communist maquis over there. And the, the, the boss of the communist machine was supposedly Captain Charles. So Pearl told me, I have a note from Charles. He wants armaments for 1,000 people. She said, go and see what it is. So I finally find the way where he was. So I, in the middle of the wood, I was in front of Colonel Charles. And I say, Colonel Charles, you are asking for 1,000 people. And if I count your men, you are on you. You are no more than no more than 100 men. He say 106. So 106. I say, why are you asking uh, armaments for 1,000 people? He says, because we have 1,000 people in the farm in the towns over there, we will be ready to go against the German and the German. Uh -huh. I say, that's a repetition, my dear. What you want to do is take over in the name of, take over France in the name of communism. So I said, forget it. You will never have armaments for 1,000 people. You will have armaments for your 106 men here, and we know exactly what we gave you this <coughs> time. So we will have, you will have exactly the same thing, but no way that you have armaments for 1,000 people. And he said, well, you know what he told me? Again, he told me, you make your war, because I told him you are not very collaborating with us. Huh? He said, you make your war, we make our war. And I had not said that, that they are not going to have armaments for 1,000 people, that I have two guns in my back. Two guns in my back, like those guys, come on. You're just shot here. I said, listen, don't play that, you know, because if in 20 minutes I'm not back over there, you have 1,000 guys against you. So he said, go. But at the end, of, when, when the liberation came, I mean, when there were no more Germans, they took over. They took over Chateauroux, which was the, the, the you know, the, the, the commanding uh, city or all the area. They took over. They, they closed the, the, the road. You were to have your identity. You had to, they took the post office, they took the, the municipal building, they took the, the newspaper, they took everything. Uh, so somebody just ran to me and said, hey, listen, they're over there and they're in the middle of the street and if you want to pass, you have to give your money. So I went, up, I went 
put it and it's an F sharp. You drop that right now. And I had three, I had the precaution to have three trucks of my guys <coughs> in my bag. If you don't drop that right now, we attack you. We throw you away. They left, of course, the man. But you see why, in fact, why did Leclerc, why did the Americans wait to Leclerc to come to Paris, to deliver Paris? You know the Americans stopped and Leclerc went full speed because he was French. And the communists wanted to take Paris. So, but you have to have the French tank with Leclerc in the middle of Paris. So they didn't take Paris. Mm. So to finish my little story, and I believe to be a little longer, to finish my little story, one day Pearl told me, you have to go to Paris, the liberation has come, you have to go to Paris to the Ministry of War to give this to this envelope to one person, give it in his hands. So cool. And they give me, to go over there, they give me a Lincoln Zephyr, 12 cylinders, you know the fish uh, bottom, you know, 12 cylinders. If one doesn't work, you don't know it. 12 cylinders. So as soon as I wanted to go to Paris, five guys went into my car. And one of the people would have come, there was no more communication. So I took five people. And I went to Paris. And I arrived in Paris. No one thing was moving in Paris. No way to, to go from here to here, no way. So I made the taxi for my five people. I distribute them for my five people. It took me about two hours to distribute everything. And I came back to my parents, apartment of my parents. The apartment of my parents <coughs> was in the Rue Comartin, a very nice little street between the Grand Boulevard and the Opera. And the entrance of my parents, it was a theater. So it was a big, big, big porch, you know, two doors, enormous thing that, uh, you know. So I go, I say, drop my people, and I go straight there. And I stop in front of the two big doors. And I was not stopped that I heard a screech in my back. A screech. I look in the back mirror, and one guy, comes out of his car, of that car, comes to my window and says, when your brother, because there was a place that I passed by where the group of 25 guys, red berets, doing that, I had my five people say, hey. say, when your brother, he was a red beret, does that, can you take him to go to Paris? My brother and myself, two years later, we arrived exactly, oh. exactly, Exactly at the same, not minute, seconds in Paris. We didn't see the light, we didn't see the sun for two days. I had two days, leaving yet three days. <laughs> and the last, we <laughs> tell you the last, you know, you had in Paris what called beurre of fromage, BOF. People were making black market. And if there were some people, and you make a lot of money. So one of these nights we were going, to, my brother and myself, we said we go to one of those nightclubs and have a drink. And we go to the nightclub, and the nightclub was so boring. It was very good in time of, that, of, of Germans, because the Germans were drinking a lot of champagne. The Americans were not drinking a lot of champagne. So the nightclub was boring. So we said with my brother, hey, let's go somewhere else. And my brother had come with an old, the car that had stopped in my back, an old Peugeot, a big Peugeot, but an old Peugeot that he had found, I never asked him anywhere where he had found the car. Uh, so the car, there was the, the, the old piece of junk in front of the, 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 the street, in front of the nightclub, and a brand new one in the back of that one. And at that time, you know, there was no, to start, you just have to pull it. The key was to, to close the door, nothing else. And the door was not closed. <laughs> so we go in the car, and we pull, nothing happens. And my brother said, wait a minute, he opened the room. And he said, they took the, the distributor, you know the distributor? They took the distributor. He had the distributor in his pocket, like that. He's sure that nobody will take his car. And my brother said, hey, we have the whole piece of junk. The room, take the distributor of the whole piece of junk, and put it on the new car. 
and we left with the new car. Come on. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, because, you know, that, that, was the end, that, that was the end of the story. I'm sorry I've talked too long. That was the end of the story because how can you imagine that two years, two years of completely different ways, we arrived, my brother and myself, exactly, exactly at the same time in front of my parents' apartment. Michel, would you, would you draw a ticket for us? Do us a favor and draw one of these winning tickets, please. I hope that's the winning ticket.